On the 17th of September, there was a little mini protest against David Petraeus, former director of the CIA, involved in the military, all around general war criminal. See, what happened was a bunch of students took to the streets, and by the street I mean the sidewalk, and they yelled at him, saying that they didn't want him there. They didn't want the military industrial complex invading their school. They didn't want the militarization of their school in favor of imperialism. So what happened was six of the people who dared protest, and by protest I mean yelled things at him, were arrested by the police. The students were assaulted by the police. Some of them had their heads smashed on the concrete. Others, like this man, were punched repeatedly by the officers when being arrested. This kind of massive overkill response is what we've come to expect from the New York police these last few years, particularly with the recent high-profile killings that they've carried out. According to witnesses, the students were forced into the street where their protest was then assaulted. The students were not initially charged probably because the police had to go and find something to charge them with. What these students were protesting, and rightfully protesting, was the militarization of their educational institution. These students, like many, don't care to have the military-industrial complex coming onto their grounds and preaching imperialism. Basically, that's what they wanted. This man, David Petraeus, is a war criminal, along with basically the entire Bush administration, which is no pass to the Obama administration, which are all criminals as well. What they didn't want was the fascist nature of the military on school grounds. The military is a fascist structure. You are not allowed to criticize. You are not allowed to speak. It's basically a totalitarian organization. This kind of mentality is what these students did not want in an educational institution, which is supposed to be the exact opposite of everything I just described. This is a higher educational institution where ideas are supposed to flow freely, where they're supposed to enter the realm of debate, where ideas and notions are supposed to be challenged. This is no place for the military and no place for a war criminal like David Petraeus. I think these arrests by the New York police are inherently very fascist because let us just look at what it is that's happening here. Students protested, and not even that many of them. Protested man who's committed crimes against humanity has committed war crimes. Even just merely saying something to him loudly, yelling at him, is considered too much. And this is not something that should be allowed. Even something as small as yelling is not allowed to be used to question the fascist state. Now, speaking of being against attacks on freedom of speech and people's rights, did you see all the libertarians coming forward being angry about this and denouncing these arrests by police because someone just people were just merely yelling about something? That they were protesting something which is a right given by the Constitution? I mean, did you see the outrage by libertarians of this a blatant abuse of authority? And no, you didn't, because almost universally they didn't say anything. In fact, I've heard a lot of libertarians actually champion their arrests. It's pretty amazing how libertarians who talk all the time about this big, bad, evil, totalitarian state that's coming any minute, which it is, are just seem to be dead silent when it's someone who disagrees with them that's being arrested. I mean, that's the point of libertarianism, right? Is to be against all coercion and all fascism and all repressions of freedom. Yet, if anybody, and particularly these small group of individuals, dare to, you know, protest what is basically a war criminal who defended the, the privilege of the, well, the imperialists and the benefits that we in the first world receive, they're basically, well, gone quiet all of a sudden. Now, many faculty and staff stood in support of these students and actually called for them to be released and for the charges to be dropped. Unfortunately, there were a handful, I don't really know how many, but some who did support the arrest of these students. You know, to those staff members, I say, do you remember what being an educator is about? Do you remember what higher education is supposed to be about? Do you remember your generation doing the same thing in the 1960s? Massive, huge protests in where students were actually killed protesting the Vietnam War. Do you remember that? Do you remember your generation doing that? It's amazing the nice huge 180 you've made. I would now like to deliver a personal message to David Petraeus. Why are you such a coward? You can't stand to have a bunch of basically a bunch of university students yelling at you. This is too much, like you can't handle this. The big bad military man, former director of the CIA, 
who's basically ordered the killings of hundreds of thousands of people, all from behind a desk, can't stand to have a bunch of kids yell at him. That's too much for you. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but weren't you, you know, in the military? Isn't being yelled at part of the training in military, having the drill sergeant in your face yelling at you? But you can't take a bunch of kids. Or to put more correctly, you can't take being criticized. You know, as a leading figure and, well, the war criminal, you think you just have a little bit of a thicker skin for a man who's ordered the killings of hundreds of thousands of people in war. But, you know, my mistake, maybe you got soft since leaving the military and you can't stand something as simple as being yelled at. Who knows what's happened to you since then? And finally, I'd like to point out the very clear manifestation of contradiction here. We have these terribly unpopular wars and the people who champion them, like David Petraeus, and the people who don't support them. And because of this antagonistic contradiction that between the ruling class and the working class, we get manifestations of that contradiction in the form of protest. Now we do see that even though this was a small group of individuals, there was a very violent police reaction to that. And as soldiers of the state, whose people's specific job is to retaliate against anyone who questions the ruling class, there they are. Now what we can expect that as the drive towards imperialism becomes more and more accelerated, we can see more and more vicious acts coming out of the police and protesters as well. Now, this will happen as the imperial system begins to break down, as we are starting to see right now. These are manifestations of that contradiction. And as it develops, it's going to go through a quantitative change. They're going to accelerate. They're going to become bigger. They're going to become more violent. They're going to become more significant until there's finally a change. What that change is, we'll have to wait and see. But in the meantime, prepare for things to become much worse. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to rate, comment, subscribe, share on various social media. And if you want, there's some other good videos here you can check out.